so orders in process. Okay, so our homework assignment was pretty much just reading. It was just reading. Our homework assignment was actually read to um, up to page 10. Uh, if you could possibly stop there. And so it's hard to find a place to stop. So we are in the class of hormatology, which is the study of sin. So if you've got your uh, ebook out, um, if not just following me, you would definitely need a, your tablet. Now, the instructions were, that's where we're gonna start from tonight. We're not gonna be able to go through all of this, but I highlighted some important areas that I wanted us to take a look at, okay? So now it says the intro there. That's where I asked us to start from. So what I highlighted for this, trying to find somewhere this thing to go. <laughs> okay, it says a proper understanding of biblical teaching about sin is critical for every believer in Jesus Christ. Sin is a subject that while it is uh, generally understood by Christians in the broad sense is often uh, often not properly comprehended in, uh, in its particulars. We must understand Christ died for our sins, that our sins have been washed by the blood of Christ. I, I highlighted that, that it uh, washed by the blood of Christ, not by a church denomination, but by, uh, um, again, um, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I wrote down, because in this lesson, we're going to learn about three types of sin, and one is right, mentioned right there, that's called personal sin. And then it goes on, so we must understand that personal sin separates us from God, as long as we occupy this body, uh, as long as we occupy this body of flesh, sin will always be crouched at the door in, an, uh, in am, ambush uh, in ambush for, for us, Genesis 4, 7. So, but I want to skip on down a little teeny bit. Um, let me stroll a little bit further. Um, now here, I, I highlighted something here. It says, as Christians, right in the middle of the page, right over top of the highlight, it says, as Christians, we have been, been forgiven. Excuse me. As Christians, we have been forgiven our sins for for salvation through faith in uh, Jesus Christ but what he also says here like this he's about we are charged with pursuing sanctification we are charged with pursuing sanctification so here it tells us that the act of forgiveness is in the blood of Christ but the act of, uh, of sanctification is charged to man. The Bible says, one scripture says, sanctify yourself, and the very God of peace will sanctify you holy. I want one of my students to find that, please, where it says, sanctify yourself. Google that real quick so we can have that scripture. I'm quoting it. Okay, but I don't want to get exactly where it's wrong, but it says, sanctify yourself. It didn't say that God was sanctified. Yes, there's a part that he does even in that. But I like what the author says. But we are charged with pursuing. Now, in an act of pursuing, Paul talked about pressing towards the mark of our higher calling. That's a part of sanctification. Would someone like to give us the definition of what is sanctification? Anyone? Anyone, what does it mean to sanctify? To set something apart. Okay, mean to, yeah. to set apart, to set aside. What is another word uh, that, that means pretty much the same thing, but it's a really important word, it's a short word, but it means pretty much the same thing? Holy. Holy, thank you. The word, who's that, Sister Julie? No, Sister no. Dina. Sister Dina, thank you, uh, uh, Elder Dean. I'm trying to get everybody. Don't have you in my picture here. Hold on a minute. Okay, so how many is on tonight? It's ten. Okay, so um, so the word sanctification means to set aside, but also know that the word holy or holiness means the same thing. It means to set aside, to set apart, to separate. It means that. Right. So in other so in other words, God is leading it up to us to separate ourselves. 
He, that's part of our job. He's not going to come in. He's not going to knock that beer can out your hand. He's not going <laughs> to come along and just smack the crack out your face or off your lips. He, that That's mm -hmm. your job. If you want to start drinking, start smoking, that's part of your job. He will come in and help us. But we have to make this, uh, make a step. This is where some people misquote. They say, if you make one step, God will make two. Well, in the sanctification process, it's also almost that. God needs to see you putting forth for effort. And when you put forth for effort, he will come in because he knows that you are no match for the devil. You are no match for your flesh. You are no mm -hmm. match. This is why the Bible says that we are saved because of our faith through grace, mm -hmm. not a work. So we're not saved because we defeated the devil. We're not saved because we de defeated sin. We're saved because of our faith through grace. Amen. Okay, so sin is not something that we defeat. Christ defeats sin through his blood, but we are charged with striving again for sanctification, uh, striving to get closer to him, striving to, to do better. That's our charge. Our charge is not, again, cleaning ourselves. Our, our charge is accepting his cleansing through his blood, is accepting his blood in our life. That's all we have to do is accept it. Anyone, anyone disagree with what I'm saying? No. Okay, God. So, so we have to understand that Christ has a plan. And, and the biggest part of our part of the plan is accept it. Okay, so now part of this, part of what we skipped over is the story of, of, of Adam and Eve. I skipped over because most of you had Bible One Advance. So if you had Bible One Advance, you understand that um, that Adam and Eve being in the garden, they were given one charge that they were told um, they could eat uh, pretty much and touch anything in the, in the garden except for the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Thou sh shall not touch it, because the day that thou touch it, thou shall surely die. Well, we understand in, in that story that Satan comes along, as he does after God gets finished talking, and he uh, he kind of changed that story a little bit. Uh, but I want to read this right down here at a little further at the bottom, and you might want to highlight this. Anything you see me highlight, you want to write or highlight it down. Remember that we are re uh, recording this, so if you need to finish highlighting or re recording, you can also do this later. But we pursue... Uh, the wholeness, the sanctification to which uh, we have been uh, called to the glory of the Lord. So this is actually giving the scriptures that I've quoted there. Did anyone find the scripture um, that I asked for? Sanctify yourself. Okay. Um, Sister Paula, can you find it for me, please, where it says sanctify yourself? And then I go on to the same God of peace or sanctify your holy. Okay. So uh, while she's searching for that for me, okay. Um, was it uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 14? Because I do have that. Where, where it I'm quotes trying, it? Yeah, well, I'm trying to find the part where it says sanctify yourself. I got wherefore seeing we also. No, I think it's in Corinthians, actually. It, my mind is, I'm thinking Corinthians or Romans. And yeah. I, hold on a minute. Sanctify it's yourself. Yourself. I went by the scripture they had here. Said again? I went by the scripture they had here, Hebrews 12, 1 to 14. Uh, boy, that's a song called thing. I just spoke to go, go, Google, and Google gave me um. Okay, it is. Hold on, let me see. I'm trying. Oh, they give me all these scriptures with sanctify in it, and not give me this exact one. Okay, well, I will come up with it later. We'll, we'll do. We'll find it later. I'll come up with it because it's this is the New Testament I'm referring. Because uh, John says where John he's praying and John sanctified. Okay. Okay. First Thessalonians one and five. First Thessalonians one and five. Uh, I re read the twenty second verse. I think I'm right. I think it's the twenty second verse. You say one and five. Uh, or is one in 20 seconds? First Thessalonians, the first chapter. The, uh, wait a minute. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, 22nd verse, wow. and the 23rd verse. Read that for us. I, I only get, I'm only getting a portion. Okay. And you said the 22nd and 23rd verse? Yes, ma'am. Right here. Ah, here we go. Uh, oh, 
abstain from all appearances of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless and uh, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's that's not the scripture I'm looking for. I'll find it later. But here's another one. Um, uh, uh, First Peter's 3 and 15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready to give an answer to every man that asks for you. That, 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 that scripture puts the responsibility on us. So you will find two scriptures. Uh, one where you, the uh, sanctification responsibility is given to man. And then the other where it talks about and uh, that he will sanctify his people. But what I want to bring out, he will do that. But we have to make the initial act of uh, coming towards him, uh, stepping towards him. Because he's not going to sanctify you if you don't want it. Dr. Short, I found one. Leviticus 20. Okay. You said that's, it's, not, but that's not what I'm looking for. That's but not what it. you're looking for. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and do them. Okay. I'm the Lord to sanctify you. Okay, awesome. Now, also, I doesn't know. Thank you, Aldina. Uh, John 17, 19 says, for... And for their sakes, I, Jesus, this is Jesus talking. I sanctify myself. That they hear him. Here he's talking about how he mm -hmm. separated himself so he may be, um, um, be an example. Okay, okay. So uh, that's the scripture. The one I'm looking for. I definitely want to find. Okay. Um. Let's move. Let's move on. Um. Okay. So we're still in part one of this and here and a lot of this that you don't see another highlight here is hey, we're, we're talking about we're, we're talking about uh adam and eve and their fall and talking about uh again that um what happens so let's hear it says the fall of human sin god is perfect and incapable of sin I, I hope everybody knows that being perfect, moreover, the universe he originally created was also perfect, filled with light uh, and holy in every way. Now, I disagree with him in some aspects, but I, I agree with nothing. I di disagree with nothing. He says being perfect, everything he created. Now, so that means angels. That means everything, even the angels, he, it goes on to say. But he, I'm skipping down a little bit. says, like, God in three persons exist in perfect divine bliss. <laughs> Okay. Somebody okay. Drop okay. <laughs> but God, it says, but God in three persons exists in perfect divine bliss before he brought the uh, finite universe into being. Okay. And so what does the word finite mean? What does it mean to be finite? It has an end. Yeah, I was going to say limited. Yeah. yeah limited. Okay. Thank you, God. Limited time. Yeah. Okay, so he had he had no need to create the world. So also mm -hmm. he, he it says he also he uh, was under no necessity to make finite creatures to pollute it. And this is the thing that's awesome that he was under no urgency. There was no need for him to create us. There was no need to create the earth. He did it out of his own desire and our love, but it was not a need. And so for mm -hmm. people to think that God need them. Are, un are under some type of delusion. There, I agree with the author, there was no need. Now, but he goes on to say, now he used the word perfect, but look what he says, that everything God created was finite. That's including mm -hmm. man. But, uh, but if we go down further, I'm trying to see where I can find that. He he goes on to say that man, it, look, look what he says mm -hmm. here, Adam and Eve ha uh, had been created perfect. Uh, but became dead to God immediately following their sins of disobedience. How could it, uh, we know that it couldn't have been perfect, perfect, because they were created out of sin, as he teaches and, and everyone teaches, that man was uh, made out of sin, all through the book of Romans, that man was uh, made out of sin. But why would the author say that man was created perfect? Um, is it because they were, um, they had a sense of innocence about them? 
Yes, I, it, right. There was more a sense of innocence. So more, I think the the better word would be man was created innocent and not necessarily mm -hmm. perfect. Because the way when we look at perfect, we look at someone that don't something that don't have no fault, something that's pure mm -hmm. from inside to out. And we know that those two were not perfect in that sense. They were only perfect in that the sense that they had not sinned yet. Mm -hmm. They had not sinned yet, but that's because there. But why was it? At, why was it at this time that Adam and Eve had not sinned? They weren't. There was no temptation. Yeah, no temptation. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, how many more is on here? I need some of the others to speak up. Okay, so there was no temptation. Therefore, yes, they were perfect. We all will be perfect in, in one sense. If there was no temptation at all. Right. Okay. Amen. Yes. So, so from the true biblical perspective, physical death is merely the transition from our uh, current to our eternal state. So one. So let's look at the types of death. You have. Uh, let me back up just a little bit. Uh. Okay. Let me. Oh boy. We have physical death. There in this right in this paragraph here, I'm going to try to highlight it. Physical death. There is spiritual spiritual death. I'm trying to get that highlighted. Oh Lord, I moved the words around. Lord Jesus, how do I do that? <laughs> oh, I know, Lord, Lord Jesus, I know you could do some crazy stuff like that. Oh man, I apologize, <laughs> but that's supposed to be spiritual death. But I moved the words around. That's weird. Well, and I'm afraid to hit um, the backwards button. Let me I push see. undo. Wait a minute, just for, um, let me see. There we go. Okay, thank. You. There we go. Okay, so so we have two deaths so far. Can someone take a, a, a guess of what the third type of death is? Physical, spiritual, uh, emotional death? No, anyone else that, that read your lesson is it's definitely in here. Eternal. Eternal, oh, there you go. So That's write right. that down, because that will definitely be on your test. And yes, we are having a test. There are three types of death, physical, spiritual, and eternal. Now, uh, I need uh, everybody, every, um, those of you that have been spo if you've not spoken at least twice before, I need you not to answer this next question. Someone explain what is physical death. What? Physical death, the death of your physical body, your flesh. Yes. Okay. That's physical death. Let's go back to the garden again. When God told um, Adam, Adam, for the most part, that the day that you, you know, break my law, you're going to surely die. Was he referring to physical death? No, it was spiritual death. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, uh, yes, let, let's define spiritual death. Sister Vera, was that you? Belma. Who was that? Thelma, Bama? Who was that? Thelma with a V. Okay, go ahead, please. <laughs> a spiritual death. Um, it's uh, a resulting from sin. I, I can't put it into words. It results from sin, but what does it do? It separates you from God. It separates you from God. So physical death separates you from your body. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. actually, when the, there is physical death, the soul leaves the body. Spiritual death separates you from God. Okay? Spiritual death separates you from God. Now, we go mm -hmm. down a little further. Um, it talks about eternal death. What is eternal death? Your time, your you know, you don't have eternal life. No, no uh, Albedina, that's okay. We're, I'm sorry, but that's okay. Anyone else be eternally uh, separated from God? Said again to be eternally separated from God. Okay, e so what thank you, man of God. So, what is the difference between eternal death and spiritual death? Anyone. Eternal death is forever. Okay. Eternal death is forever. And spiritual death is what? 
Temporary. Okay. Okay. So it's temporary or is it temporary? Is it always temporal? Can it be can can spiritual death turn into eternal death? Yes. yes. Yeah. When Without does spiritual death turn into eternal death? Without Absolutely. when you die without when you die without Christ, without accepting Christ as okay, anyone else besides I'm sorry. Don't repent. That again, and Apostle. When we don't repent and get it right with Christ uh, before uh death occurs. So, so when okay, so I, I want to know exactly when is spiritual death done and eternal death takes over. When does eternal death take over? Dr. Child, I believe that eternal death takes over after your spirit disconnects from the body. And if you have not repented uh accepted Christ before death, then you just go into eternal death. Okay, awesome, awesome. So so uh eternal death takes place uh right after is it spiritual death or physical death? Physical death. Physical death. There you go. Etern so please get this right on the test. Eternal death takes place after physical death. As long as you are alive, there is still a chance to you recover from spiritual death. Christ's blood can still come in. You might be 88, 99 years old. As long as you're alive, there's still an opportunity to uh, recover from spiritual death. Now, here's the big question. Is there recovery from eternal death? No. No. Okay. I'm asked this question. Is there recovery from physical death? Yes. Mm. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. yes. I say yes. Okay. So mostly, mm -hmm. mostly yes. Yes, because there's always that, that chance. That chance. You can't say that uh, physical death will never, because there's always that chance. There has been people that have testified they had died and came back, and they gave their life to Christ because of that that physical death. Their spirit left their body. They could see themselves. They and and I I have no reason to doubt that. I have no reason to disbelieve that. It's been too many people that has said that has happened to them for me to think that's a hoax. Now it's been thousands of people. I, I believe that we know that Jesus has raised some from the dead, and so once Jesus raised Lazarus from a dead uh, from the dead, Lazarus became tr a true runner for Christ. He really got on far. If you studied the life of Lazarus after death, he really got became on far for, for God. So, yes, there it is possible only in resurrection, though. It has to be a resurrection take place. And that is, again, one in a billion. Well, I ain't going say one in a billion, but that's quite a bit. Any questions, comments, or statements? Uh-oh, I mean. Okay, anyone anyone highlight something in your notes that you want to bring up that I might have missed or you want to uh, share? I had highlighted something, I believe it's, uh, it, it's second, third, third paragraph. Believers, however, are no longer spiritually dead to God, but spiritually alive in Jesus Christ. For by grace, through faith, we have passed from death to life. Amen, amen. Now, what page is that on? That's on page five. Okay. 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 Um, so I, what I have on page five at the bottom is, again, for this reason, physical death is no longer a thing to be feared by us who uh, have placed our trust in the Son of God. Death is death in its truth, uh, threefold uh, totality, no longer rules over us, Hebrews 2 and for to Being spiritual alive, we are are now no longer a uh, spiritual dead, but we are no longer subject to uh, the second death. Okay, what is the second death?
I would say that's eternal death. Okay. What what is the uh in the book of Revelation? What did Revelation call that? Anybody? When a couple of things take place right near the end of the book. Cast into the lake of fire. Death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. Put that down. When death and hell is put into the lake of fire. When we are spiritually alive, we are no longer subject to the second death. Okay, anyone has any questions, comments, or statements as far? Okay, it says here, let's return to Adam and Eve. Once our first prince were spiritually dead, expelled from the Garden of Eden and cut off from the tree of life, it was only a matter of time before the certain comment of physical death. So they're saying here, hey, they hadn't physically died yet, but um, it, it was de it was definitely uh, going to happen. It, it was a uh, physical death was a process. Uh, and so goes on. Um, it says one one uh, spiritual death. It says um, said so, well. I'm gonna start this. The consequences of sinning and Adam uh, for Adam and Eve when Adam and Eve sinned. Therefore, this for threefold death became the new reality for their lives. Threefold reality takes place uh, as soon as they sin. Adam and Eve instantly experience spiritual death. Instantly experience spiritual death their bodies were also instantly rendered mortal now they are totally mortal wherein they were probably had lived forever but now their body is totally rendered mortal it says the process of decay and degeneration <laughs> began mm. immediately upon partaking of the fruit immediately their body began to uh, go through the process of uh, death and decay. Okay. Anyone else has any question, comments, or statement thus far? I do, Doctor Short. I know it might not have anything to do with with the content, but I was just thinking next to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it was the tree of life, and I always wondered. <laughs> Why, why they never thought about eating that that tree versus the knowledge of good and death. I mean, evil, good and evil. You know what I'm saying? Because they. Anyway, I was just thinking about that. I just wondered if you had any comments for that. Yes. Yeah, well, well, they already had it. They already had eternal life. Then. Before they touched the, before mm -hmm. they touched the fruit, they already had eternal life. They would never die. So why would God put that tree in the in the garden? Then? I don't know. Why. I can't answer. I that. know you can't answer but, that, but, but I'm just, they didn't yeah, have. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. That's yeah, I, know. I understand. I understand. Um, I mean, we got plenty of types of trees, so but I don't think there's no particular reason. But there was a reason to touch the other tree. Because touching mm -hmm. the other tree will make them like gods. But trusting the tree of life wouldn't do nothing for them because uh, if, if it wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Dr. Short. Yes. On page seven, this number two, the one, the one you say number two, the last thing we looked at was number three. Should that be number four? I'm not putting in a necessary order. Um, no, it's the, it, it's it, it's in the book as well. well, well I happen you to know you're talking about a fourth type of death? Well, no, no, not a fourth type of death. It says, uh, num I'm thinking number four, the consequences of the human race. Because I see you broke down one, two, and three, the, the three types of death. And then right. the next paragraph is on the top, this one right here on the top of the second paragraph on, on, on page seven. But it says number two. Oh, I see. Okay, number one was the consequences of sin. Yeah. And this is the con ah, okay, I got it. I got it now. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Yes. Dr. Okay. Yes. Dr. Short. Uh-huh. I, I don't hate to be backtracking, but okay. when um when God said that everything was good, um, 
did that mean that everything was perfect? No, and and actually, when God made that statement, everything was good. That was the that was a part of the second creation, not the first. So it it wasn't good. It's not perfect. At all good is all it is. Um, even our, our standards, something may be good, but good as can be far from. Um, okay. And so, but yeah, that was in. Um, and actually, we're talking second creation in a way because the first creation died because of of sin and because of Satan landing on the earth. And but during the recreation period, when God made made Adam, made man, and uh, so by everything He created, He He, he did call it good. But um, again, good was far from perfect. I think the only time the word perfect was used is when we, uh, as we use the word perfect. <laughs> But the oh. Bible don't give us a Hebrew word that says that man or anything that man created was perfect. Even the Bible, sure. even the angels are made just a, that we are made just a little lower than the angels. So the angels were in much better condition than we were. Mm -hmm. So Adam and Eve couldn't have been perfect because they wasn't tested yet. A trial. Well, the reason why I, I I think that they the reason why that they. Some might want to think they were perfect because they hadn't sinned yet, but but the seed of sin was already in them because they were created out of the dust and the dirt that was full of sin. The, yeah. the reason they didn't, it, and it wouldn't have manifested what they were made out of until something was put in front of them to, to show, show forth that they were, that the purpose of God putting them in the midst of the garden and giving them one command to show them that um, what they were made out of don't because first of all um satan comes along and says uh, um well not first of all well god gives them the command don't trust the truth is a mr garden but here where god omniscient comes in this is where god knows he already know that once he tell them don't touch the tree in the mr garden he knew that satan was gonna come and tell them hey it's okay you're not gonna you got gonna surely die you know that, that that's his omniscience he already knew that what was going to be done, but he needed, he really needed Satan. He really needed Satan to really do what he do uh, because actually they weren't, they weren't children of God. Adam and Eve were not children of God. They were only children of Satan at that time. They were not children of God because they had not gone through the born again process. They still had his seed in them. They had Satan's seed. He might have created them, but at the end of the day, they were still children of God. And the Bible is very clear to be God's children, you must be born again. They had not been through no born again experience. They didn't even know that they were sinners. So Christ, God, needed uh, Satan to start the process of temptation. He couldn't tempt them because the Bible said God tempts no man. He needed Satan to do what he do. And that is be a tempter. He was a tempter with the other angels, and he and and he didn't change his nature after his fall because he came right back and tried it and it, it not try. He tempted Adam and Eve. So God used him in order to fulfill His purpose that man will learn that he's a sinner. So so um, um, Adam and Eve, we could say that uh, they wasn't perfect. But they, when they, but they didn't, but they had not sinned, right? And so it was Satan. Satan, Satan contaminated them. Then, well, they were well that they were already contaminated because of what they were made out of. But what he did, he he gave them. He he all he did was tempt them. He didn't put their hands on it. He, so he didn't. He didn't really contact uh, a contamination is putting a thought in their head. Then yes, he, 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 he contaminated them. He, he put a thought in their head and that thought was you shall not surely die, but you'll be like God. That's the contamination. Mm -hmm. But, but that it shouldn't have been because uh, even though we go through temptation, they still should have remembered what, 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 what the master said, at least Adam should have in a way, but okay. she took and gave to her, her husband. And he bit, and he knew better. Dr. So, Schroeder, one, I have uh, a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 hold on, yes. Uh, Dr. Shandy, you, are you clear? Yeah, you another point B today. Yeah, yeah, I just had one more question I just wanted to ask. Now, was that was the tree, was that a test? Well, it, 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 yes, it was a test. 
in a sense. Uh, but again, it's, it was a test for, for man. But again, recognizing the fact that God is omniscient, all-knowing. Okay, mm -hmm. so it, it was a test, but God already knew the results. He, it's almost like me giving you a test, but I know that you're going to get an A or get a B or get a C. He already knew. <laughs> so, so the test wasn't for him. The test was to teach them what they knew and did not know. It was just for them. They That's why they felt guilty and went and got some leaves and covered up because they knew they had messed up. They knew they had sinned. So it was just for them to, to grow and now, now they have become smarter. Wow, we there's no way we're like God, we done screwed up already. We done failed the first thing and the only thing you told us to do. Wow. And they were guilty. They felt bad. But as Satan <laughs> left them alone and left them alone, you know, uh, well, eventually they would have sinned because eventually somewhere along the line, God would have told them to do something and they wouldn't have did it. Because the nature of, of rebellion was built in them. Mm. Yes, okay, someone else I had a question. Yes, Dr. Short, I ha had a question. I hope it's not going too far from our lesson, but we were talking about the word perfect. And so when the Bible describes Job as being perfect and upright, how would we explain that? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, when we look at perfect again, let's look at perfect from man standards. That when we look at man's standards of being perfect, and there is we we make no um no we will say make no mistakes, but look at uh, Job's life. Once Job began to suffer, see, Job was perfect. It's easy to live what we might think a perfect life if you've not been through no temptation, you had no need, every bill is paid, you have you have nothing to be concerned about. Job had the perfect life, but and Satan knew that. Look what Satan said. Huh? Yeah, of course. You know, Job is perfect because you got a hedge built around him. You know, and all of this. Like mm. Job said, "Huh? You move that hedge and let me touch him skin for skin, and let's see what happens." Well, God said, "Okay, but don't touch his soul." So what happened? Job began to show some cracks. First of all, he began to accuse God. He began uh, to fill his mouth with arguments and, and say various things that people say when, they, when they're hurting. We tell people, I don't like you, don't love you, I hate you, and all this. Job didn't quite say those things, but he filled his mouth with arguments. Throughout half of the book of Job, Job was arguing with God. So, of course, Job couldn't have been perfect because if he were perfect, he would have just accepted what happened and never said a mumbling word. But he was only able to live that life and have that mindset because God did have a hedge around him. But but at the end of the day, he did not, uh, he did never, he never cursed God. That was the main thing. Satan needed him. Yes, Satan wasn't happy that he filled his mouth with arguments and, and talked back to God. Satan needed uh, 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 Job to, to renounce, to denounce God. Job never denounced God, but he did question God. Mm -hmm. uh. So he wasn't perfect. Because he sure makes said a whole lot of things that a what we call a perfect person, and we don't know nobody that's that, that perfect. I mean, mm. everybody looks perfect while they're on TV and all this kind of stuff, but behind closed doors, people say a whole lot of stuff. God let us hear Job behind closed doors. Because I'm granted, Job was not in the street saying this to God. Job was in, behind closed doors, and nobody probably knew but God all that was in Job's mind and in Job's thoughts. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We're almost done for tonight. Anyone else? Question, comments, or statements? Very good question, guys. Well, Dr. Short. Yes, sir. So when and when you're striving for perfection, mm -hmm. uh, is that be sort of long, going uh, uh, along the lines with sanctification and holiness? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Because uh, sanctification is a process. You, we never, you don't just get it and then you're done with it. It's it's a process. And the reason why it's a process because Satan don't never give up. If you don't get you one way, he'll come back another. If you don't like the white wig, he'll try the black one. He'll try some way to tempt you or whatever. He's going to try every day. To, so it's a process. Sanctification is a process. I, I, in one of my courses, I talk about sanctification and purification. And you can take this down. Mm -hmm. Sanctification. Sanctification is more of an outward thing of pulling yourself physically. Purification is more inward that you don't take nothing inside. You, we shouldn't. The Bible talks about, oh, come on here, New Testament. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
I can't put that scripture right now in my mind. It's so full. Okay, but uh, purification is more so inward. Inward is what you take inside, take on the inside. So we don't need to be sanctified on the outside and then uh, putting a whole lot of stuff in our bodies, uh, doing a whole lot of drinking, doing a whole lot of smoking, doing a, to eating a whole lot of stuff that defies the body. You know, so, uh, someone mentioned something today, and I'm almost done. Do you, I don't know how many times we ever go to the, uh, go to a doctor, how many times we see Chinese people at the doctor? <laughs> Not hardly, not very rarely. There are yeah, certain really. denominations of people that you don't hardly see at the doctor. And I and I contribute this to a lot of their lifestyle and the way they eat. Mm -hmm. We defile our, te our temple, especially as right. white folks, because a chicken is cooked every way but loose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, come on now. We got a fried sauce. We got an air fried. We got an oven fried. We got deep fried. Mm, mm, mm. I, I sound like the guy about the uh, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> yeah. So, so again, we sin. We we a lot of time we don't eat right. We sin against the body. So 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 purification, sanctification is crucial um, to God. And, and also, it's part. It's part. They're they're part of the process, but that's another course. Doctor Shore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Overseer. So, uh, so when we look at sanctification and purification, does regeneration fit in there? Yeah, re regeneration is a part. Of, it is the whole process uh, of becoming new is regeneration. The the whole process, but regeneration. It, it, it is a process because it's not done overnight. Paul said we die daily um, or we're being regenerated, being renewed um, and, and being restored. But renewed or restored to what? Um, actually, and, and that's the part that can be somewhat confusing, um, the process of regeneration because um, because regeneration is, is, is actually taking us to a place we've really never been, or taking us back to the best place we the best place we've been. Because the, the we never been perfect. We all are children of Adam. We all are children of 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 him being who was the first partaker of sin. We are all, we are all a part of his nature. That nature in him had transgressed to all men. So, but regeneration. Is, is a part of trying to restore us back, restore us to God. And I, I don't want to say necessarily back to God, but but regeneration is a word that I don't use a lot because the question in my mind is re means do over. And I'm like, well, what was our first state? Our, first, our state has always been sin. But I understand what it's saying to regenerate. It, it's, it's taking our bodies back to where before Adam sinned, before Adam sinned, uh, he was uh, immortal, but he became mortal because of sin. So regeneration is somewhat taking us back to the immortality, but the immortality is not going to take place until after, again, we die or the rapture takes place. But it, it's a process until Christ comes or until we die. Whatever happens first. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I have another class I, I had to teach. Um, I, I, I accepted an engagement to teach uh, out of a class out of Texas. And um, so I'll be teaching on that. But this, but you guys should have plenty here. Now, this is what I need you to do. Go back and revisit this tape because just about everything we talked about is going to be on the test. We're going to have one more class next week and then the test. So your next, uh, also, so revisit this. Go to your next 10 pages. Go to your next 10 pages, but definitely revisit everything that was highlighted, everything we talked about, conversation, may possibly be in this test, okay? Yes. Okay, so if there's no trusting comments or statements, okay, we are, we are going to dismiss. Give me about, a, 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 I'll be in another class in about a, uh, for an hour, that's nine o'clock. Give me to about 10 o'clock at 1030 for me to have this posted. Okay, everybody? 
Okay. Okay, God bless you. I want to love you much. Let's pray out, Father, right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all you're doing, all you've done. And we ask that you continue to bless those who weren't able to make it on this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Love you much. Amen. Bless everyone.